Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 7, Lesson 7, Practice with Rational Bases. So you begin, first of all, looking at four different expressions here, deciding, deciding which one doesn't belong. And as you look at these, there might be a reason why each one of them you might say doesn't belong. So for example, when we look at all of these ones here, we notice that um, on this one here, this one seems to be the only one that has um, both a same base and positive um, ex um, exponents there. Here is the same base, but we have a negative and a positive, right? So that those don't quite match there. These all have positive, the only one that has all positive is this one, but they don't have the same base. So maybe that's why that doesn't belong. Again, there's reasons for each one. You have to talk through what you think it is. So I'll let you do that with your classmates today. Okay, moving on to number two. It's just some practice here using the different exponent rules we know and seeing what you can put together. So it's to choose six. So let's just do a couple of these here. Here are the same base. And so we're gonna add those exponents together. Five plus six is 11. So we'd say seven is the 11th power. Over here, we have a negative four and a negative three. So we probably add those together. Four and a three become a negative seven right there like that, okay? So that's an idea for how that works. Over here in this column, we have a three and we have a five on this side, minus 28. So when we do that, we end up with three to the negative 23rd power right there. For G, you would do six and that's to the five minus a minus eight. And minus minus eight, last time I checked, means adding. So that's gonna be six to the five plus eight, which is gonna be when you do six minus and minus eight, it's gonna be six to the 13th power, right there. Okay, oh, I said three, oh, that's funny. Okay, and then over here, let's do one over here. Let's got this guy. We have multiplying those together, so that becomes four to the negative ninth. And we can multiply these together, that becomes six to the negative 15th. So just some examples there, there's six of them. You could do the other ones, no problem. What problems did I skip? Um, I don't know, the ones I didn't do. <laughs> Is there a reason why? Just I just picked some random ones, that's all. All right, moving on. Choose three to write as a positive exponent in this section here. You know, we're just practicing stuff here. So this really could be written as one over two to the seventh, and that's positive like that, just flipping it down the denominator. Here, same thing, moving it down the denominator, one to three, one over three to the 23rds. And here would be one, the 11 on the bottom to the eighth power. Same over here, one to four, put the nine there. This becomes one over two to the 32nd. And then finally one over eight to the third. This is rewriting of all of those ones there. Evaluate means to kind of work around and solve them. So here we have five minus five is zero. So I get 10 to the zero power, which is equal to one. Here we have two thirds times two thirds times two thirds. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. Here we have 8 plus a minus 8 becomes 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. Here we have 5 fourths times 5 fourths, which is 25 over 16. Multiply those together, we get 0, so 3 to the 0 power is 1. And here we have 7 over 2 times 7 over 2 for 49 over 4. This next part is about inconsistent bases, and part of what we're going to do here is going to build us in preparation for an upcoming lesson uh, where the bases get to be a little different. So let's take a look at what we have. Ready? So first of all, we have to decide if they're true or false, and then what we could change about false ones to make it true. And as you look at these ones here, there are really just two true ones and three false, false ones. So let's see what we have. In the first one, we have one third times one third, and we have one third. Now the bases are all the same. So when the bases are the same, we just add up the exponents. So two plus four is six. So that's gonna be a true statement right there, right? We know that becomes six, so we're good to go. This one's a little different. If we were to write this out, we have really, in this case, we have three times three times five times five times five equals 15 times 15 times 15 times 15 times 15, right? We can see right away that this is gonna be much greater, isn't it? Like that's gonna be so much larger, it's not equal. But I can start to see that three times five is 15, so th that would count for one of those. This three times five is 15, that would count for one of those. 
but then I'm short for all these other ones here. So if I was to rewrite this, I might say something like, um, you know, maybe we say this becomes three to the third power here, okay? And so I add another three to this one there. And if by doing that, then I have three of these people, third one, let's eliminate two of these ones and make this one also a three. Now I have something that's gonna work, right? Three to the third times five to the third equals 15 to the third. Now we're in business, aren't we? Okay, so let's take a look at number three. Three has, we have a five and a five and a five and a five. Those are all multiplied together, but that's gonna be added to five, 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 and five, equaling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all multiplied together. So we're gonna have a difference here, why? Because that addition statement right there, this is not gonna be true, this is another false one right here. If we wanted that to be accurate, we should turn this into a multiplication right there, and then we can combine them together to make it true. This next one's interesting because you have this fraction here, and the fraction is, um, you know, I know the kids in, in, in my school are not too fond of fractions most of the time, but I see I have a half and a 10, and I have over here a five, okay? So think this through. Half of 10 is what? That's right, it's five, okay? So if I have a half times a half times a half times a half, and then I have a 10 and a 10 and a 10. Right now, if I join those together, what's half of 10? That's gonna be a five. There's one of my fives. What's half of this 10? Another five. And what is half of this 10? Another five. Now, we can see right now that I have another half left over, and on this thing I have an additional four more fives to go, right? So we know this isn't gonna work, that's gonna be greater than, this is the false statement. But it's an interesting way to making something equal. If I wanna make it equal, I could keep this as a four, and if I change this 10 to 10 to the fourth, and change the five, instead of five to the seventh, make that five to the um, fourth as well, okay? If I did that, then I'd be adding another 10, which connects with that one, and I'd be stopping here, and I'd have it being equal to each other and be okay. Kinda cool. Let's see how it works out over here, because this one is a little bit like what we've been doing. So this becomes three times three times five times five equals 15 times 15 is the idea. Here's a three and a five, that's one of our 15s. And here's another three and a five, that's another one of our 15s. So it's a really interesting thing we see happening here with these examples. What we're noticing is even though the bases are different, there are ways to combine them together. If, in this case here, the exponents are the same, okay? What we kind of see is a little pattern here. It's like a, and be like something like this. So a to the n power times b to the n power is gonna equal a times b to the n power, all right? So it's an interesting thing to look at there. And that really is just what we're gonna be building towards later, but here's where we are for now. So in summary, we've had seven lessons so far, and we really put together a lot of rules about how exponents work. If we have the same base, okay, and we multiply, then we add the exponents together. If I have one base and I'm going to exponent to an exponential power, then I multiply those together. If I'm dividing, n divided by m, like so, then I'm gonna subtract those there. And if it's a negative exponent, that means to drop it down to the denominator. And finally, anything to the zero power is equal to one. All right, let's take a look at your homework tonight. So pause this, do your homework, and let's check it together. Homework time, here we go. So beginning here, we have seven to the six minus two, because it's a fraction there. So six minus two is four, so we say seven to the fourth power. Here, we're gonna multiply, so that becomes 11 to the four times five, which is 11 to the 20th. Here, the base is the same, so we're gonna add those up. 
So four to the two plus six, which is four to the eighth power. Here the base is the same. There's a one right there. They don't always write it, but you can assume that it's there. This is six to the one plus eight, which is six to the ninth power. And here we're gonna multiply that out. So we have 12 to the 14th power. Here again, there's a one there, so we can subtract three to the 10 minus three to the first power becomes three to the ninth power. Here, again, the base is the same, so we're gonna add those up. So we have 0 0.173, and what is nine plus two? It's gonna be 11. Here, we're gonna do five minus three, which is gonna be two. So we end up with 0 0.87 squared. And finally, the base is the same, so we're gonna do eight minus six. Eight minus six is two. So we have five over two squared. All right, and the last one here. Noah says that two to the four times three to the second equals six to the six. Let's see if we agree or disagree. So what he's saying is that two times two times two times two times a three times a three is gonna be equal to a one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, let's take a look here. Here's a six, check. Here's a six, check. I'm left with four, and I'm left with four sixes. So this is just not gonna be true. This is far greater than that one. Those are not equal. So for Noah, we would disagree with Noah and what he's saying there, okay? But for Tyler, which is part B, let's take a look at Tyler. Tyler says I have one, two, three, four. Then I have two fours there. And that equals 16 times 16, right? Two to the fourth, four squared, 16 squared. Well, is that gonna be true or not? Let's take a look here. Well, four times four is indeed 16. And how about this? Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So that indeed is gonna be equal. So we would agree with Tyler. So Tyler is correct. Noah is incorrect there. All right, that's it for today. See you next time.